do for a good many years. And I, from all I hear, people the world over are happy because it will end testing in the atmosphere by the United States and by the Soviet Union or and Britain. We hope all countries will join. The treaty provides for that. But uh, as you all know, uh, testing in the atmosphere has become a matter of great concern of many people in the world, feeling that it may affect uh, the health and, of future generations. It also has the value that uh, it is the first step of importance in the attempts that we've been making for many years to try to make a beginning <coughs> of uh, control of nuclear weapons. And uh, for that reason, I think it will also be acclaimed. I, uh, ha I haven't seen the American press, but as far as the European press, which I saw the, this morning, I stopped at Copenhagen, there's a very wide approval and uh, real rejoicing. The same is true among the people in, in Moscow. I saw some of them uh, yesterday and today, and uh, uh, they, are, of course, are very much pleased. The Russian people are dread war and uh, are ready to applaud anything that is a step closer uh, towards the peace which they crave. Now, if there's any other question that questions any of you want to ask, I'd be glad to try to answer them. Would you give me your name in the paper? I don't know all of you. Bob Young, Chicago Tribune. Yes. Uh, Governor, this widespread approval that you've spoken of, do you anticipate that the necessary majority of the United States Senate will share that approval when it comes up to ratification? Well, I've been away from the United States for, for, for two weeks. I think I'd like to ask you that question. I've not had any reports. I expect to uh, be available to any of the committees of the Senate. Uh, so you can answer that question better than I can. Mr. Secretary, Governor, Governor Tom Wicker of the New York Times. Yes. Uh, certain language in the treaty has been construed by some people as possibly restricting the use of nuclear weapons in war. Could you comment on that? I heard the New York Times had an article uh, uh, of that kind. Uh, uh, the treaty is a test ban treaty. The question was whether the Article 1 uh, was loosely drawn and uh, in any way interfered with the use of nuclear weapons in war. The answer to it is that it does in no way, it does not in any way interfere with the use of nuclear weapons in war uh, if uh, such a tragedy should, uh, should come. The language is clear. The, uh, the uh, treaty is a test ban treaty. We've had competent lawyers do, uh, working on it and uh, this is, uh, there's no basis for any thought of that kind. In fact, uh, uh, these matters were spoken of quite openly between the Russians and the British, and these, this particular language was discussed, and it's perfectly plain that it, this language in no way inhibits uh, any country, the United States or any country, from using nuclear weapons uh, should the need require in war. Mr. Chairman? Yes? Uh, you spoke of this as a first step in bringing nuclear weapons under control. Could you chart for us possible next steps on the road? Uh, I don't think that would be profitable this afternoon because there are no other steps uh, uh, being negotiated. Uh, the, there, are, there are about a dozen or more or several score proposals that have been made. The only one that Mr. Khrushchev suggested and which we gave some consideration to was the idea of establishing control points in uh, both sides of the Iron Curtain in order to protect against surprise attack. There was also some other talks about controlling uh, the level of forces and the uh, level of budgets. But other than that, there were no other discussions. The Russians are very anxious to discuss uh, a non-aggression pact between the NATO countries and the Warsaw uh, Treaty countries. Uh, we've agreed to discuss that with our allies. We didn't negotiate it, but the, uh, in any way, and we will discuss that with our allies and see what uh, next step uh, may be desirable from our standpoint to take. Governor Hammond, oh, would you give us the burden of your conversation with the President this afternoon? No, I think you'll have to ask him that. Mr. Hammond, as our ambassador to Russia during the war, you foresaw serious post-war difficulties with our wartime allies. What does the achievement of this agreement portend? Well, I think uh, taking it by, by and large, this is uh, uh, probably the uh, uh, 
a, 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 a very important step, particularly if it's followed up with other steps. Um, I would class it as, uh, since the Austrian Peace Treaty, perhaps as uh, uh, the most important step. Now, don't hold me to that, because there have been some other steps that have been taken which have been useful. Uh, the uh, all I can say is that the negotiations uh, in Moscow were an atmosphere uh, of business-like discussions. Uh, we attempted to find out what the other country had in mind and to find uh, provisions in the articles of the treaty which uh, took care of what each of us had in mind. And uh, I can say the discussions were in a friendly atmosphere. Mr. Governor, uh, John Scali, ABC. Could you uh, give us the benefit of your thinking on what caused the Soviets to uh, reverse their position and accept the treaty on nuclear testing of the kind that they have rejected in the past? Well, Mr. Khrushchev made that statement, remember, in his speech of, of July 2nd. It, uh, this subject has been up for discussion. Uh, they. Uh, indicated they would be willing to do it at, uh, uh, some years ago. We have uh, tabled several times a treaty, but the last one was in August last year, and this treaty follows uh, some of the provisions of that uh, treaty that we, th uh, that we tabled. Now, as far as the Soviet Union is concerned, uh, I can't tell you why they wanted to do it, but I think it's fairly plain that Mr. Khrushchev wanted to uh, uh, show that his, to the Chinese that his uh, policy of uh, coexistence uh, could produce some results, but beyond that, I can't tell you. I think also the Soviet people uh, want to have a relief from the, from the tensions. Everywhere I went uh, in Moscow itself, I saw the track meet, the American-Soviet track meet, and the, everywhere the people that I met there were all very keen to see progress made, which would give them some hope of uh, getting uh, rid of this fear of war which exists in Europe. Mr. Secretary, this oh, here, Obama, Obama, okay, press. could you characterize the tone of the message uh, you brought from Chairman Bush up to the President? Just no, I think you will have to ask, uh, uh, you will have to ask Mr. President, the President about that. This lady has been asking for my attention for a moment. Mr. Secretary, can you tell me when you're returning to Moscow uh, with Mr. With, uh, Secretary Ross and uh, whether you will take up any further discussion on the non-aggression pact or anything at that time other than signing. Well, you will have to ask Mr. Rusk about any discussions he may have. Uh, it's a possibility that I may go back, but I've got a lot of work to do in my job, and so I may not. I don't know yet. Uh, uh, this dispatch from uh, Moscow said that when you saw Premier Khrushchev, you intended to ask him if he could use his influence to stop the fighting in rivalry. Uh, did you make such a proposal to the Premier? Well, the matter was discussed. The matter has been actively under consideration between the British and the Soviet uh, uh, co-chairman. You know, they are co-chairman and have a responsibility for uh, the conduct of the ICC and the enforcement. Uh, we discussed the matter. Of course, they maintain their information is different from ours. I think the all I can say is the exchange of uh, talk were useful but, uh, but inconclusive, and we'll have to wait and see what happens on the ground. Governor, oh, back of UPI, can you enlighten us any further on your own discussions with Premier Khrushchev yesterday? No, I don't think so. We, uh, he gave us, I saw him yesterday afternoon for about three hours, and then uh, he entertained um, at supper, dinner, uh, Lord Hailsham, who was the British negotiator, and myself, and uh, there were several other Soviet uh, officials present, and some of my colleagues, and uh, it was a genial uh, atmosphere, uh, rather interesting, we walked through the Kremlin, uh, the people you know all over the Kremlin these days, and he was greeted by the crowd, and uh, so he shook, ha shook hands with some of them, he looked like an American politician, patted some of the children on the head, and uh, uh, seemed very genial, and he introduced me, most of the Russians know me of old, and uh, the Russian people were quite pleased. Mr. Secretary Catlow, NBC, what was said in the talks about Red China and France as far as their There were no detailed discussions. It's quite plain that uh, the, all of the three of us would like to see as many countries as possible ad ad adhere to the, to the treaty. What the attitude of France and Red China will be, I can't tell you. But I do believe there will be a great many countries that are prepared to adhere to the, to the treaty. The treaty provides for uh, the adherence of as many countries who 
as wished to. Mr. Herman, did you discuss the continued presence of Russian forces in Cuba at all? No, that wasn't part of my responsibility. You've already had your... Okay, well, I think I've got to leave in a minute. How many more questions can there be? One more. Okay. Did you get the impression in your talks in Moscow that the Soviets are bidding to give new guarantees for the Western powers in Berlin? No, we didn't discuss that. You see, uh, before I went in, we assured our NATO partners that we would not negotiate about uh, non-aggression or any other subject of which uh, they were involved. Uh, we were there to discuss uh, test ban, the British and the Russians and ourselves, and although the uh, non-aggression pact was mentioned, it's mentioned in the, in, the, in the communique, there were no detailed discussions at all about it. But the subject will be one that we'll raise uh, in Paris among the, uh, our NATO partners, and what will happen from there on, I don't know. But in any event, uh, no commitments of any kind were, were, were taken, implied or otherwise, in regard to any matters that affected uh, any of our allies. Thank you very much. Thank you.